My name is Ty French, and these are my rants. Welcome to Ty Rants. And welcome back to Ty Rants. My name is Ty French, and these are my rants. I feel so uncomfortable <laughs> this Wednesday morning. Hi, how are you? Because I am braving. I'm really braving and trying to record a, a video episode by myself. I typically only ever do video episodes when I have someone, but I feel like I've really nailed down like recording a podcast by myself. I feel like I really get into a flow. I don't feel awkward at all recording by myself, but looking looking into a camera and having this giant light on me and being by myself is, um, it's really humbling. I won't lie. Uh, <laughs> I might look like a big ass bitch right now because I just got out of the shower um, and I might get a little sweaty. You might hear the air conditioning on because the air conditioning's on. As you guys heard in the last episode, it's July. It's going to be on. I get hot. However... My air conditioning did just break the other day. Um, all of a sudden, I'm in my APT just having a gorgeous day, minding my business, probably watching some YouTube video or something. And all of a sudden, I hear a trickle of water. Then the water gets thicker and thicker. Hurricane Katrina was coming out of my air conditioning unit. I'm not exaggerating. There was literally water spewing out of my AC unit. And yeah, so ever since then, I've had to have it off. And I've been so hot. Something about like the the humidity, like air conditioning, like you have to, th there's water that, I don't know, something, I don't understand the science behind it, but the the air and the water and the, the, uh, and the, the water evaporates into a cloud. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't understand how it works, but I immediately called my landlord and I was like, sir, 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 it's the end of July. It's about to be August 1. So you're going to need to get your cute little fanny right on over to my apartment to fix this immediately. And he got someone over there and the guy was like, oh, you just need to clean out your filters when it's blocked. Then the water was some, I don't know. He cleaned out the filters. I didn't think that that's what it was because I clean out my filters regularly. I'm not an idiot. I'm not the type of person where something happens at your house and it's just an easy little fix. And the handyman comes over and is like, oh, you're just a little gay boy and you don't know what to do. No, I knew what I was doing. I clean my filters regularly. They did need to be cleaned. But like I've, I've lived here for a year. I didn't ever have Hurricane Katrina coming out of my air conditioning unit. So, um, yeah, I thought, you know, maybe this was just a one off. Maybe it was a really humid day. Maybe the humidity was coming through the AC. I don't know. Um, yeah, no. It then was fixed for um, two days, a whole 48 hours. And all of a sudden today, <laughs> Hurricane Katrina, just as I thought. Water spewing out all over my dresser. It's right above my, um, my two long dressers I have in my apartment. And water just everywhere. Thank God I didn't have something valuable under there like my laptop or my camera or my phone or I don't know. Some clothes I need to return. So, um, yeah, I haven't been able to have it on all day, but I just sat down to record it and I'm like, I'm so sweaty. I just got out of the shower. I'm so hot and I have it on. So if all of a sudden a little trickle trackle starts happening over there, I might need to turn it off. But I figured it's nighttime. So maybe it's not as humid. Maybe it doesn't work as hard. I don't know. The water's going to come down. I don't know. The AC guy had to come over again today because I was like, excuse me, sir. The water is still coming, okay? Niagara Falls is coming out of my wall. So I'm going to need you to fix it. And um, he came over and literally looked at it for two seconds. First off, this, this air conditioning unit man has the nerve to just show up unannounced. I had called the guy about my AC unit because it, this was like yesterday, I think. And he was like, okay, I'll try and get someone over tomorrow. Um, okay, but then maybe give me a heads up as to the time of when this person is supposed to be coming to my home because I'm a busy person. I've got places to be, people to be, um, you know, <laughs> errands to run. And so I was on an errand because I'm just such a busy person. 
like I do. I go and I do things about my day. Really what I was doing, I was going out to the bank. I was getting a check so I could pay my rent because it's about to be August 1. Reminder, rent reminder, everyone. Pay your rent. Um, so I was actually going to see my landlord and ask him about when the AC guy was going to come. And um, literally drove, left my parking spot, which we know in Los Angeles, those are valuable. Got to the bank, parked, got out, opened the door to the bank, and I get a call from the AZ guy. Hey, I'm outside your house. Can you answer the door? Um, excuse me, sir. I don't know what kind of desperate housewife you think I am, but I'm not just sitting my ass on my fanny all damn day waiting around for your ass. Any other day of the week, I probably would have been. But I'm not at home. You're lucky that the bank is just a few skips and a holler down the road. So I didn't get the check. I had to hurry and run on back home because they were already there. He literally looked at the AC unit for like two seconds. He's like, oh yeah, I believe you. I don't know. This man, this man has the nerve. <laughs> he, he, so he looked at it for literally two seconds and was like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know where the water's coming from. Whatever. You probably just need to replace the whole thing. I'll tell you landlord. But like a lot of times they don't want to replace it. And I was like, I don't care if you want to replace it or not. I'm paying way too much to be living here. I need AC, okay? Also, it's about to be August 1. Like I said, fix it. It's about to get hot. Next week is supposed to be like high 80s, and I'm terrified. I'm literally terrified. I've been so hot this week not having my air conditioning on. And at night, it's a whole other situation. Anyways, this man literally is in my home for literally 20 seconds. Looks at it, walks out. Didn't even see water, didn't. Asked to see the video, didn't turn it on, nothing, just like looked at it. It's like, yep, you probably need a new one. I'm like, why did I have to hurry and run over? Then this man has the nerve to ask me in this exact paraphrasing, can I use it? <laughs> can I make a tinkle real quick? Asking if he can use my restroom before he leaves my home, my humble abode, which obviously, you know, when you got to go, you got to go, okay? I get that. And it's a human experience. And we live in a city where, and we live in a time and a day and an age where, man, can I just use a restroom? Where am I supposed to take a shit if I'm on the freeway? Where am I supposed to take a tinkle if I'm out in public and all these stores won't let me use their, their, their restroom? So I understand. I understand the dilemma. However, it was just very abrasive. And using the word tinkle was a little interesting, if I do say so myself. Um, also, you've been in my house for five seconds, and you didn't even fix my air conditioning unit. So I don't know. It just felt like very abrasive. But I was like, sure. And then can you leave? Because I got to, you know, I got to go run my errand again. This man <laughs> has the audacity to pee in my restroom. With the door open. He didn't shut the door. He didn't shut the door. I live in a studio apartment. So it's not like I could like, it's not like it was like he went down a hallway and then turned and he was like, oh, I'll just be really quick. So I'm not going to. No, like I was standing right there. And I know what you're thinking. Maybe, you know, he was trying to, you know, hit on me or something. No, 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 no. This is not that type of a scenario. And this is not that type of a man. We were not giving off that energy whatsoever. And I could tell by the pitter patter, <laughs> pitter patter from the urine that he was standing up. Now I get you're a man. And like we do that. I don't, but I get some men do. But um, I feel like if you're in someone else's house, maybe take a sit. Because I don't want your dribblage anywhere around my toilet. You've already come in and violated me by not fixing my air conditioning. Not once, but twice. You've been over here this week. And you have the nerve to ask to use my restroom, but you leave the door open? I've never been shocked, gagged, gooped in my entire life. I literally had to walk into the kitchen, which is like kind of in another room. It's like not really. I needed to do an apartment tour still here so you guys can like understand. So, uh, 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 in a state of unbelieving in my life. Anyways, so that's kind of my really only. <laughs> <laughs> I 
life update for you guys. That's really how my week's going. Um, I I really hope that since I have headphones on, um, I'm still able to hear Niagara Falls coming from the air conditioning unit if it miraculously starts. But it normally ha only happens like in the middle of the day. But I also don't want to time it at night when I'm asleep. So I haven't been sleeping with the air conditioning on. I have just been struggling over here, okay? Let's just say that. There's no air. And you guys already know I don't really sleep that well. So the no air conditioning has really not been helping either. But I figured since I was sitting down and I was recording the podcast, I had to have the air on. And I'm willing to take the risk. I moved anything <laughs> that was valuable out of the way. And if a little dribble, dribble, drabble goes on the dresser from Ikea, then um, I think it'll be okay. And if it's not okay, my landlord's going to have to pay for that too. Anyways, wow, um, just a really fun start to the episode. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, everyone. I hope you guys had a great weekend. I'm trying to think, what did I even do this weekend? I don't think I did much. Um, nothing, 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 feral. Nothing, nothing. I didn't really do anything exciting. Nothing to write home about. Um, however, I did start a broadcast channel for you guys. And no, not a broadcast. The news. Not a broadcast. CBS. Turn on channel four. A broadcast channel. Channel. A broadcast channel on Instagram. Now, if you guys don't know what this is, I don't really know what it was either. It's been, you know, they always send out like tips to creators like make a channel. This is our new feature. And I'm like, suck a big fat dick. I don't want to do that. Um, so they've been wanting me to make this for a while. And like, I feel like I've seen a lot of creators I follow make broadcast channels. And like, I didn't really understand it. I didn't under like get it. I didn't want to do it. I feel like it's another thing. I feel like I'm constantly telling you guys like follow my photo page, follow my podcast page, do this, like this. I'm just like, oh, whatever. It's just another thing that I have to keep up with. But um, anyways, it's like a group chat kind of that only I can <laughs> message in. But it's actually really fun because it's a group chat that you can join by going to my Thai French Instagram profile page and like in like the... Uh, profile description it has like tie rants and it has like a little message icon or whatever and you can click on that and then join and it's basically a group chat of my photo page my um tie rants page and my personal page and literally it's just like a place where i can send you guys like when a new episode is out i can give polls i can ask you guys questions for new episodes i can you know just send you like my inspo for things i can put links. I can send what like camera I was using for certain shots. I don't know. It's just like a fun little group chat. Uh, kind of like Instagram stories, but I guess it's better because if you maybe weren't on Instagram that day, then it just like stays in your messages. It just like automatically goes to your Instagram DMs. Um, and yeah, it's just like a fun little group chat. So if you want to go join it, go to my Instagram profile at Ty French and in the profile description, it just says Ty Rants. And you like click that and you join it. And it just like whenever I send a message, it goes into your Instagram DMs. Anyways, would love you guys to join um, and come hang. You can like, you can't respond, but you can like like it and like heart it and like put emojis to it. And like if I give a poll, if I do questions, anyways, you guys will get it. Um, anyways, um, I, <laughs> I saw a video over the weekend that I, I, I have thought about. 10,000 times since I saw it. And I just have to, I, I, speaking of the things that I do in the broadcast channel, I sent this TikTok video. If I find like a TikTok video, I won't like bombard you guys with a million TikToks, but like if I find one where that I literally was crying laughing, like I will send it in that. And I've only done it once because, you know, the, the group chat is new, but I found <laughs> this TikTok clip from these girls, it's a podcast, and the podcast is called Girls Gotta Eat. It's a Dear Media podcast, and they're talking about Hello Kitty. I, I've got to just play this for you, the whole thing. I have never laughed so hard over TikTok in my entire life. I don't know what it is, and I actually, I maybe need you guys to just watch it, so maybe join the chat, you know, clickbait, but um, okay, here it is. Hello Kitty isn't a cat. I didn't even, I wanted you to explain this to me. <laughs> so I am so an, shook. Jill Cock, the senior <laughs> vice president of marketing and brand management at Sanrio, appeared on today, last Thursday, and said, Hello Kitty is not a cat. 
She's actually a little girl. <laughs> I feel like this is when J.K. Rowling came forward and said Dumbledore was gay. <laughs> Flip the script. This is crazy. This is saying like Mickey's not a mouse. <laughs> he was not a dog. What are you saying? So then she continues. It's Cock so then told the TV wrong. show that Hello Kitty, who weighs three apples. <laughs> now what are we doing? <laughs> Every time I watch it, I literally cry laughing. <laughs> Hello Kitty is not a cat. She's a little girl. That weighs three apples. Uh, wh 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 what are we doing here? That Hello Kitty, who weighs three apples. Stop. Now what are we doing? <laughs> She's a girl. She's a girl who weighs three apples. That's her weight. And is five apples tall. <laughs> three by five. Grew up in the... <laughs> Those are her measurements. What's your height and weight? I'm three by five apples. Three by five apples. <laughs> That's her square footage. Me too. <laughs> okay. How are you she five apples tall and you weigh three apples? <laughs> right. How are you five apples tall and you weigh three apples? Hello, kitty. Riddle me that. How are you a cat that's a little girl? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm dying, you guys. Sorry, you guys. You're not ready for the plot twist. I'm sorry, you guys. Okay, so she grew up in the London suburbs with her twin sister Mimi, <laughs> and their parents, and the family's pet cat. <laughs> she has a cat. Hello Kitty's not a cat, but has a cat. She has a cat. <laughs> their family's pet cat named Charmy Kitty. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> you guys. I just had to share that because the amount of joy that that podcast clip has brought me. And if you want to see the visual clickbait, go to the um, uh, the broadcast channel on my Thai French page. And I sent it in there. I've never seen a funnier podcast clip in my life. It is so funny. And there's so many layers to it. The podcast host, I've never listened to that podcast. And mm, consider yourself um, having one new subscriber, a.k.a. me. I'm about to start listening. Because th their facial expressions and everything just, like, sold it so much. Their delivery. Like, come on now. What are we talking about? She's a girl who's who's a cat. No, she's not, a, she's not a cat, but she's a little girl who weighs three apples and is five apples tall. Like, what, what's happening? They sold the story so well. And also, what are we talking about? Hello, kitty. It's not a cat. Actually, what are you talking about? How is Hello Kitty not a cat? Her name's Kitty, and she's got cat ears and whiskers. So how is she a little girl? I'd like to see a photo of her cat, because if she's not a cat, I'd like to see what her cat looks like. Um, It's all very confusing, and saying that you weigh three apples is such a specific description but also not a specific description because apples have different sizes. So what are we actually talking about here? And you're five apples tall. How are you a little girl that's the size of a Care Bear? How are you a little girl that's the size of literally a Build-A-Bear? And you're not a cat, but you're white and you have whiskers. And also she's not Japanese. So I don't know. There's a lot of um, lore with Hello Kitty that I think I maybe need to dive into further upon, you know, finding out all of this information on this podcast. And maybe I'll bring it up with uh, Miss Josefina Cuervo when we do our next Totally Random episode. But that TikTok is actually probably the, the thing that has been fueling my entire existence and personality for the last four days. Thank you. Anyways, we have so much that I want to rant about today. It's the Olympics. I don't know, like, what's the theme song for the Olympics? Um, I mean, it's French this year. Right? It's in Paris. So, oh, gosh. You guys know the lore, uh, I would hope, if you're two tyrants about me in French class. I tried to learn French. It didn't really work. All I know is how to say je m'appelle, t'as a rosé, Macdonald, frise, non fromage. That means my name is Tyson French. I would like a Big Mac with no cheese and fries. Um, every time I've been to Paris and every time I've been to France and I ask for a McDonald's no fromage, um, it comes 
actually with cheese. So I don't know if I'm saying it correctly or if I don't know the French just actually do hate Americans in which they don't know that they're actually hanging on one of their own kind. I think. How, how do you have a last name that is French? Literally, F-R-E-N-C-H, and not be French, be from, from the country region of France. You know, it feels a little wrong, but it also feels maybe a little weird because are people walking around with the last name Spanish and they're from Spain? Are people walking around with the last name America and they're from the United States of America? Are people walking around with the last name English and they're from England? No. French is such a weird last name. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's brilliant. And I love it. Thank you to my ancestors. I don't know. How do you get a last name? Do you just pick it? The, the, the four score and seven years ago, I was told, the, the riddle me this, um, was that long ago, my family had to flee for something. A war or something. I don't know. And we went to a different place. We were refugees. And we were the only family that was from France. So they gave us, they called us the Frenches. We were the French people. Um, and that's how our last name started, our surname in some, some countries. Um, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's a big pile of dog shitty shit shit. But that's what I tell people. But it does make sense because it's like, why would my last name be French, F-R-E-N-C-H, and not be a little French? genetically, dna -ly. Like, I, I, there's got to be some French in me. However, I've never done a 23andMe, and I, I've i been hesitant to do 23andMe because it came out one time that, like, the 23andMe and everyone, all those companies that you send your DNA to to find out your relatives was, like, selling that data to the government. Um, and then I think that's how they caught Brian Koberger, whatever his name is, who murdered those Idaho college students. Because they've like found his cousin or his uncle or something who did a 23andMe. Not that like I'm ever going to murder anyone or that I would, um, you know, I'm not like withholding my DNA from the government. I'm sure if they, um, if they don't have access to it, I'm sure they could find it. I mean, I've been to urgent care about 500,000 times. So I, um, not that I don't want them to have it, but you know, as I told you guys, the older I get, I do lean a little bit more conspiracy theory-esque. I don't want the government to have my DNA. I want privacy, <laughs> okay? I just want to know if I'm French or not. I want to know what other, I mean, obviously I'm the whitest person in America, basically. You can, maybe you can't tell from the bronzer on my face. Thank you, Charlotte Tilbury. Um, I just put a little sprinkle on because I just got off to the shower and I didn't want to look literally sickly on this video. Who knows if this video is actually going to make it out alive because I'm feeling very vulnerable. But anyways, um, what was I saying? <laughs> oh, I'm obviously like, you know, of, of European descent. That I think is clear with being white. But, um, and then with the last name French, it's like, you got to be French. But it's like, I just want to know. I want to know the details, you know. Anyways, back to the Olympics. I'm going to keep it real with the tyrants. Do I look like the certain type of individual? that watches the Olympics or has ever seen the Olympics or cares to continue to watch the Olympics. Now, I'm going to answer that for you. Ain't never seen the Olympics in my life. I've never seen an Olympic game, tournament, thing. I don't even know what they are. I literally don't even know what they are. But as a commentator on, you know, all things pop culture, I figure this year I would at least watch the opening ceremony. And I did. And that is four and a half hours of my life that I will never get back. That is the last time that I try to be... No, not try to be a comedian. That's the last time... No, no it's probably not. It's not the last time. Because let's be honest. I did that with Barbenheimer. Where I just went out. I wasted my whole day to do the Barbenheimer trend. For the tyrants. So that I could go and report back. Um... And that's where we're at again. So I'm not going to say never do this again, but I will say that is four and a half hours of my life that I literally will never get back. Now, had I known maybe what it was, then I probably could have saved my time and just watched literally 
the YouTube clips after, but I didn't know. And I wanted to be in the moment and I wanted to like watch it live. And, you know, when, when something happened, I wanted to be, you know, just the first person to know <laughs> along with everyone in the world that's watching. And also I wouldn't be able to talk about it for a week later anyway. So I don't know why I did that, but, um, it was so long. I don't know if it's normally that long or if the Paris one was just longer because they literally ran across the whole freaking country with this dumb torch on this dumb little ninja guy. I didn't like it. There were parts of it that I thought were beautiful, that I thought were stunning, that I thought were thought were show stopping. I mean, the the best part of it all was Celine Dion at the end performing on the Eiffel Tower for the first time in years. Obviously, her documentary recently came out. She has, like, stiff person syndrome. It's really hard for her to perform or to like, use her vocal cords. And that was just a really powerful moment, and I loved it. She sounded beautiful. She looked beautiful. It was amazing. It was iconic on the Eiffel Tower. It really just, like, especially at the end of the four and a half hours, I was like, hallelujah. Literally, like, it was amazing. But, um, the four hours prior? And I get it. It's like, it's, I just don't think I'm the target demographic, you know? So I'm not hating on it because it's like, I'm so glad that these athletes that have worked years get their moment to shine and, you know, sit on that boat in the pouring rain. Let the rain fall. I'm coming. Dun, 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 dun. Let the rain fall down. And break my dreams. Fun fact, my friend is in that music video. He's the guy who kissed Hillary Duff first on camera. Um, anyways, um, shout out Gavin, love you. <laughs> anyways, um the rain really dampened the mood. Uh, that's numero uno. Number two, what I was saying, like, I'm happy for these athletes that they get their time to shine. This is their moment. They work, like, years and years. They work their whole life. But, like, every Olympics is obviously every four years. But as a spectator of someone who literally doesn't even know what sports happen in the Olympics. Wah, wah. Could we have, could we maybe, and, and, and then the performance is, that were supposed to keep you entertained in between the boat rides, those can-can dancers were slipping and sliding and falling and grooving. They were literally struggling for their life. And I understand it's probably because it was pouring rain. And the camera was five miles away. But, like, what is happening here? Like, this is not a refined moment. Um, now, don't get me wrong. There were moments that were amazing. Celine Dion. The Mary Antoinette head cutoffs in the building with the screamo music, metal music. A lot of people didn't like that. Hello, that was the best part. Hello, that literally was the most entertaining part of the entire ceremony. I loved it. That was amazing. I love that they showed all different genres of music. It wasn't just like, you know, American famous celebrities. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Obviously, it was really inspiring, you know, the first 10 boats <laughs> before I got bored seeing just all the different countries that come here to perform, all their different cultures, the way that they dress, like they all have different uniforms and they all just seem so excited. And like that, it, it was, it was really beautiful. It was really inspiring seeing these countries that like literally like the, the performance from North Korea, that is the only time that they're going to be able to ever leave their country ever in the world. Like that is crazy. And it's the, it's those type of things. And like seeing just, you know, where I feel like we're at a very, sensitive place in the world politically and just with like all these wars happening that it's nice to see everyone come together for a common love of sports and the arts and performances and to be able to like come together and put political differences aside and just be humans and like connect over these things that all humans love to do. So I did like that part of it, but it was a little long. Um, and the other best part was the 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 queer representation and the drag queens doing that like runway show where there was like the blue guy on the table. I'm sure everyone's heard about it. All the Christians are getting their Bibles in a panty wad because they think that everything is about them. And they just hate gay people so much. They hate drag queens so much that everything has to be about them and everything has to be an attack. So they're freaking out that 
They're making fun of the Last Supper. Guess what, Christians? Not everything's about you. Not everything is about you. They literally were not mocking the Last Supper. They were literally doing a recreation. First of all, let's not forget where the Olympics started. Um, Greece. What, what do we know about Greece? As we talked about in the last Totally Random episode, Greek mythology, okay, which has been around for way longer than Christians or Jesus Christ was. So the Olympics were not mocking the Last Supper painting or whatever. It was an homage to the Greek god Dionysus, which, let me pull this up. Is an it's a painting of a ceremony of an ancient pagan festival. And if you guys have been around for a while, then you guys know the pagans basically created everything. The pagans created Halloween, they created Christmas, like everything that we know basically like tracks back to the pagans. And a lot of people can say that like a lot of like traditions in the cr Christian religion originated with the pagans. But who were the pagans? They were Greek people. And that's where the Olympics come from. So they're paying homage at their own ceremony, their own Olympic ceremony to an ancient Greek ceremony. But the Christians just think that everything revolves around them and drag people are bad and children are watching and they, the drag queens are mocking us. They're mocking us. They just want to get married and gays want acceptance, but all you guys do is mock us. Suck a big fat dick. Suck a big fat dick. Literally shut up because not everything's about you. And if you think that your child is going to turn gay or that we're like trying to be weird towards children while they're watching dancers and drag queens doing a lighthearted dance and a runway show. Meanwhile, half of the fucking Olympics is men in Speedos and girls literally in skin-tight leotards with their tits and vaginas out. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. If I was a child, when I was watching, you know, something like this, I didn't watch the Olympics, but if I was watching, like, you know, sports, if there was a commercial with drag queens on it, that wasn't the thing that was making me realize I was gay. I hate to break it to you. It was the men in skin tight leotards with biceps 20 inches around in diameter. That's the thing that's making you realize you're gay. That's not making you gay by any means, but it's like, if your kid's gay, your kid's gonna be gay. Like I, the, the outrage and the hatred that is being spewed towards that specific scene in the opening ceremony is literally making my blood boil because to just be so self-centered that white Christian nationalists in America think that this ceremony that is put on by Greek, by Greece, that's been happening for thousands of years. It's like recently become a thing since like the 1890s or whatever, the last like hundred years. Um, for you to think that the first time that, you know, they're really highlighting drag queens on main screen TV in the opening ceremony, that isn't an, it is an attack on your religion. Do some research. And the fact that these big news outlets, like, before they literally slander queer people and drag queens and say like, oh, they're making fun of the Last Supper. When they didn't even do their research and the fact that now the Olympic Committee has come out and so many people come out and said like, whoa, 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 you guys got this wrong. We are not mocking this. We are, we are paying an homage to this painting that has been around for way longer than that painting and, oh, trust me, they're not going to report that. The Fox News is not reporting the update of, oh, never mind. They didn't actually mean that. They meant this. Mm, no, no, no. They're going to let it rampage. They've planted the seed. They're going to let this hatred just spew out and go out. And I hate the the rhetoric that is like, you guys say you just want like to get married and you want acceptance, yet all you guys do is mock Christians. First off, like, to... Even if 
that were true, that that was a, a symbol of like the last painting or whatever, if they were mocking it. To all of a sudden group all queer people into saying, oh, well, you guys just say you want equal, equal equality and gay marriage legalized, but then you guys just mock us. Um, do you see me up on that stage painted blue? Do you see me mocking Christianity? Do you see me doing that? Like, you cannot judge, like, one performance and then all of a sudden attack the queer community as a whole. Like, that is unacceptable. And uh, I got I to gotta scale back. Anyways, that's, that's my thoughts on that. Anyways, like I said, it is hosted in France this year in Paris. And speaking of homosexuals, speaking of... Being gay and gay marriage. Is the president of France single and a homosexual? Because damn, that man is fine. That man is fine. At the very first start of the um, ceremony, they like, you know, introduce the guy who runs the Olympic committee and then also, you know, France hosting it. So it was like the president of either the, the prime minister of France or the president of France or Paris. I don't know, but he's hot. He's giving very scandal, very Olivia Pope. What's his name? The president, president Fitz, Ezra, Fitz, 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 Fritz, Fitz. I think it's Fitz. I don't think it's fits, but something like that. The president on scandal, that's what he's giving. And something about just like a basic older white guy is really doing it for me. It's really doing it for me. Um, the floating piano was really pretty um, when they sang, like, imagine all the people or whatever. Um, the robotic floating horse carrying the Olympic flag was actually pretty cool. I liked that part. It, it really did remind me, like this. Like I said, this was the first time I had watched the opening ceremony or anything of the Olympics, but it really did make it feel like, oh damn, this is what they were doing back in the olden days, in the Roman days, or the, I mean, the Grecian days. When did the Olympics start? So the Olympic ceremony that we know today, leading the first modern games in Athens was 1896. So a hundred and, you know, 28 years ago. Yes, I did that math very quickly because I'm 28 years old because I was born in 1996 and a hundred years before that was 1896. So yeah, I don't know. I was kind of born at the, the century mark. It's kind of cool if you, if you think about it. But um, it says that, wait, I was reading this somewhere earlier, but okay. The ancient games were staged in Olympia, Greece, starting in 776 B.C. The drag queens were making fun of the fucking Last Supper because guess what? Jesus hadn't even been around for 800 years. Like, oh my God, that is crazy. That is literally crazy. But anyways, so the games have been happening for a while and um, just watching the whole like ceremony of it all and the whole like tradition of it all and the torch and everything, it really did make me be like, wow, humans are really funny and this is really cute. And I like this. I like this tradition. The whole torch thing, the Olympic torch is carried for a number of weeks to the host city. Mainly on foot by runners, but also using other forms of transportation. So a few months before the openings of the Olympic Games, a flame is lit at Olympia in Greece. And then throughout the torch relay, the flame announces the Olympic Games and spreads a message of peace and friendship between peoples. The torch relay ends at the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games. So the person carrying the torch might have seemed like a long time while he was just running throughout Paris. That fucking torch was lit in Greece, in Olympia, Greece, and walked by foot to Paris. Now, from Greece to Paris, that seems like no big deal. But let's keep in mind, the games have been hosted in Los Angeles before. How the hell did you get a fire torch lit 
through TSA from Athens to fucking LA? Or did he have to come on a boat and someone has to hold it the whole time? Do you take turns when you're sleeping? That tradition I'm inspired by, but I'm also terrified of. That just seems so crazy, but I guess cool. And also, why don't we see anything about it throughout the four years? Oh, I mean, a few months before the ceremony. I don't see nobody be posting like, hey, I'm walking this stint from LAX to Kawanga, and then I'm passing it off. I don't hear anything about this Olympic relay. This Olympic, um, yeah, torch relay is what they're calling it. Also... The the Olympics got to get their shit together because why they be making the athletes sleep in anti-sex beds? I guess there's like an Olympic village that all the athletes like stay in and the Olympics, I guess, are known for being a breeding ground of sexual behavior. And this year they made the beds literally out of like cardboard so that the athletes wouldn't have sex on them. And I just have a few things to say. Um, one, these athletes are some of the hottest people literally on planet Earth and some of the most physically fit people on planet Earth. So um, if they want to have sex, let them have sex. Two, they've been training their entire lives and they literally have been training specifically for the last four years. Now they made it here, let them party, let them release. Once they're done with their tournament, let them have sex. Three, if you think now, making a bed out of cardboard is going to stop two Hornaya individuals, or more than two, from having sex. You're dumb as shit. Guess what? They weren't going to use a twin bed to begin with. They're going to have an orgy in the shower. Like, <laughs> there's so many other places that you could have sex other than on a twin bed. And especially if you've got, you know, only a twin bed. You're probably going to find other places. You're going to be half on the bed, half off the bed. The only thing making the bed out of cardboard is going to do is make them get terrible sleep. But these are the best athletes in the world about to perform at the Olympics. Like, they need to get good sleep. So the anti-sex bed is really just rubbing me the wrong way. Uh, it's even Christian nationalist, fucking bitches. All that to say that I, the opening ceremony... There was definitely some hiccups. Um, the rain, it was really long. I didn't love all the performances because it just felt like they were filmed from so far away. And because of the rain, it was really sketch. Um, all in all, I thought it was really beautiful and it was like a good idea. I liked it being along the river sign saying whatever. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm not French. Oh, unless 23 Me comes back and then French. I don't know how to pronounce it. The sign, the same, the same. The river saying, um, <laughs> let's not even get into the fact that the whole thing, it was supposed to be on the same because they were cleaning out the shit from the river so that the swimmers could swim in it. But then the day came and they didn't clean out enough shit and the E. coli levels were so high that the swimmers couldn't even do it even though they spent like $2 billion on it. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about that fact. Let's keep it to the positive. <laughs> what is so hard about cleaning shit out of water? Get the poop out of the water. Why is it so hard? Do you clean our tap water? Get the shit out of the water. Why is the shit in the water to begin with? Why is the river saying poopy to begin with? Why is it gross to begin with? I thought it should be cute and sweet. And the the mayor of, of Paris was saying that they it was supposed to be like a swimming pool after the Olympics. Like they were gonna get it so clean that then the the swimmers were gonna swim in it, but then after that, like the public could just swim in it. I'm just gonna say I'm not going swimming in it anytime soon. But I do love that idea, the thought that it would be just a giant swimming pool running throughout Paris? I can't think of it any better. But if you have the whole entire world watching and it's the Olympics and you put billions of dollars into it, like, what is so hard? Clean it. Get the shit out of the sand. Get the shit out of the sand. Get the shit out of the sand. What is so hard? 
empty it, drain it, fill it back up. Like, I, I, I don't understand the sign. I don't understand if it's a real river. I don't understand if it's man-made. I don't understand what it is. But I just think, like, we do clean large bodies of water. Like our tap water, kind of. So, like, what is so hard? Like, put a filter, to put a giant filter in and clean it. I don't, I don't understand. I'm not, you know, a biologist. But I do, I do think that if you gave me a few billion... I could probably figure it out or and or hire the people that could figure it out. I thought it was all beautiful. Loved it. There were a lot of things I didn't like. I'll probably now. I mean, they're only every four years. So I'll probably still watch the opening ceremonies. But I am very upset at the outrage towards the key, the queer community and all the queer artists that were involved. Nikki Dahl from RuPaul's Drag Race. She hosts RuPaul's Drag Race France. She was one of the head people like in that performance and when I saw her like my heart just lit up and like there was so much queer representation within this ceremony and also Christian nationalists fuck off because guess what you're so upset about queer people in the performance guess what there's 200 queer athletes performing at the Olympics like fuck off this is our space not yours like if the athletes performing want to see representation for their communities in the opening ceremony of the ceremony that they're going to be performing in Fuck you, because this performance, this ceremony has nothing to do with Christianity. It's not our job to be uh, uh, polite to Christians because this has nothing to do with Christianity. This is literally an ancient Greek uh, uh, Olympic sport festival in a different country. If you don't want your kids to watch it, turn off the TV. Like, no one's forcing you to watch it. This isn't about you. Anyways... Anyways, <laughs> oh my God, Beyonce, how did I forget? Beyonce had a commercial, T-E-A-M-U-S-A, she did an interpolation of her song, Yaya from Cowboy Carter, and she introduced Team USA um, at one of the commercials, and no notes, no notes. She's the prettiest person I've ever seen. She's the most talented person I know. I know. Well, um, she was also seen shooting a music video in New York this week at like a Western bar. And while that didn't make my pussy a flutter, while it did make me excited, I, I'm not going to get my hopes up because guess what? I saw those Renaissance visuals being filmed three years ago. Where are those? Where are those? Now, I do think that she's probably making a movie of all three acts together, but that just means I'm not going to see that for a few years. So I'm just going to keep my trap shut. She did. She was waving to fans outside of her car window. You know, someone on TikTok was showing the whole scene, whatever. But, you know, for now, for now, I'm good with the G T E A M U S A entering Team USA Olympics commercial in her Cowboy Carter esque gear. I'm good with that for now. It was a very nice surprise, and anyway, I loved it. Um, the last thing that I just have to talk about uh, in regards to the Olympics, because of course, how could I even talk about the queer community and talk about being a homosexual and talk about the Olympics without talking about Let it go, go. let it go, go. Lady Gaga, go, 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 go. Lady Gaga opened up the um, opening ceremony, and I've been saving this for the end because you know, you gotta save the best for last. She's a mother. She's a sister. She's a daughter. She's a fighter. She's an icon. I could not love Lady Gaga more if I tried. Like, I just love her. And they just don't make performers like her anymore. They don't. I'm sorry. They don't. They don't make performers like her anymore because the way that she came and scooed out up and up and up up, the way she came up there in that gorgeous custom Dior feather little moment, strutting down them gold stairs on the river sign, saying, I just, 
Gabe John and Gabe's phone. I love her. I love her. It was so iconic. It was so like not, it was showy enough, but not being too showy. Like it felt respectful that it was like not about her. It was about the athletes. It was like this like grand entrance, but like also still felt demure and like just not super like gaga, you know, it was very like jazz esque. And we know, we know she does that like jazz show in Vegas and stuff, which I will never forgive myself for not going and seeing. But I just, I loved it. I thought it was so beautiful. Her voice is so amazing. The performance was amazing. The costume design was amazing. Custom Dior, the pink and the black feathers, everything about it, I just love. And I love her so much. And while she was in Paris, she was just feeling like so inspired by all the fans coming up to her that she decided to. Um, show us a sneak peek of her new uh, LG7 album. Who knows even when it's coming out? I hope soon because this clip is just making my pussy. <laughs> Um, okay, okay, metal rock gaga. Okay, okay, rock star. Okay, metal. It's giving born this way. It's giving OG gaga. It's giving art pop. It's giving amazing new, something fresh, something fun. And you know what it's not giving? It's not giving woman's world. It's not giving woman's world. So I could not be more excited for this new gaga era. I love Lady Gaga so much. And I think, you know, maybe she was probably inspired by her filming The Joker. And that's coming out this fall. So I hopefully maybe think LG7's right around it. And it's giving, you know, rock or energy as well with like Joker. Like, bleh. So I don't know. I just, I love her. She's a superstar. I'm so excited for the new music. Stay very, very tuned. That's kind of my Olympics coverage. I have not seen any of the actual sports. And... I'm not going to lie, and I'm probably going to say it's probably going to stay that way. Um, I have no idea what sports are even in this Olympic ceremony. Um, I found out recently that breakdancing was involved. Okay. Not saying that's not a sport, but I just, you know, breakdancing, gymnastics, and then basketball. Uh, okay, is a summer camp like? And if if break dancing is a sport, then I think drag queens should be a sport. I think podcasting should be a sport. Put me in the Olympics, gold medal. I'm a gold medal winner. I don't know. I don't know. It's just like, what? Well, what is a sport? What is an Olympic sport? And I actually have no. Did I just hear a dribble? I'm scared. I have no desire to watch the actual sports. Like, I'll see the clips that float around of the iconic things of, like, Simone Biles and all of that. I'll watch those. But I'm not sitting down and I'm turning on my TV every day and I'm watching sports. I'm, no. Not my vibe. I'm glad I was a part of something and watching the opening ceremony. But that is where my Olympics coverage ends. Anyways, it has come to my attention. Um, I've got some bad news. I've got some bad news for the community, for the tyrants. Southwest Airlines is doing away with open seating. And if I'm the person that's bringing that news to you, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I was shocked and I was shook. The Texas-based carrier Southwest Airlines, which has used a unique open seating model for more than 50 years, announced on Thursday that it will use assigned seats and offer premium seating options on all flights now. I am livid. If I'm buying a $49 flight to Vegas, guess what? I want it to be open seating. I want no, I want no additional pricing. I don't want anything. I'm so sorry, Southwest Airlines. Now I have to pick a seat and I have got the, I've got to pay extra. To actually sit anywhere that's not right next to the shitter and in the middle seat? No, no, no. That's not why I use you. And guess what? 
I'm going to stop using you. And I'm going to now stick to Delta. I'm going to stick to United. I'm going to stick to America. I'm going to stick to anyone other than you. Because guess what? The only reason anyone wanted to be on your shitty ass plane was because it was open seating. No one chooses Southwest Airlines. No one wants to go on Southwest Airlines. People go on Southwest Airlines because it's $39 and you can sit wherever the fuck you want if you get there early enough. You know? So if I'm going to have to pay for an upgrade fee, then I'm going to be on a Delta flight. You bet your ass. If I'm going to be on a Southwest flight, guess what? I don't care if you sit me next to the shitter because I showed up late. That's my, that's my hatchet that I have to bury. That's my consequence. But I would at least like the opportunity that if I check in precisely 24 hours before my boarding time, I'm getting a boarding class A30. And I know that I will at least get an aisle or a window. And if I'm traveling with a friend that we are for sure going to sit together. Nowadays, that's just not, that's just not a thing. In Southwest, you were the only one left. You were the only one left. Okay. Why'd you have to do that, do that, do that, do that, do that to me? Why did you do that, do that, do that, do that, do that to me? Speaking of Lady Gaga, classic, classic song from A Star Is Born movie, classic. <laughs> You guys, I feel like I've been literally <laughs> chaos this episode. And also, one of you little rats wrote me a three-star review, which is not good. Three out of five, not good. And it said, take a shot for every time he smacks his mouth or clicks his tongue. I hope you know that I'm doing that intentionally for comedic relief. You know, that's not me being annoying. And I'm sorry if as an audio experience, it's not it's not cure or you don't like it. But, like, it is intentional. And leaving me a three-star review because of that is just really... Now every time I clock, I think about it. But I like the clacks. And if you don't like the clacks, then you've clearly never seen an episode of Drag Race. I mean, come on. You think I clack a lot? Those heels are click, click, clacking about. Anyways, there currently are two astronauts stuck in space with no date, no return date home. None. None. Oh, let me tell you. Oh, let me tell you. No return date for NASA astronauts amid problems with Boeing Starliner capsule. NASA says the pair are not stranded but will stay on an international space station until technical issues have been resolved. They will remain on the space station with no return date, they said Thursday morning. Blah, 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 blah. They, oh, mama, mama. They've already been on there for seven weeks. They've been on there since the beginning of June. And they have no return date home. They are floating in space. You must be so bored. What, what do you do? What do you eat? What are you looking at? Is there a window? Are you just watching Earth just rotate going through days, just circling around the sun? Can you see the sun? Do you have sunlight? Are you looking at the moon? Are you closer to the moon than you're at Earth? Where are you at? Where are you at in space? And also, are you scared that you're never going to come home? Are they just buying themselves time and saying that there's no return date at home and that they're not stranded because they don't want the bad media coverage and they want the astronauts to freak out because they still need them to, you know, conduct the experiment up there? Are these people ever coming home? They have children. Also, I will say during their like press interview, there was like a camera, you know, I don't know that there are cameras. I mean, there's cameras on spaceships. Apparently they were doing like a press conference. Oh, there's the tongue clack. They were doing a press conference and the girl, there's a guy and a girl on there. They're not married, but I mean, they've been up there for a while. They've got to be firkin. Am I right? Um, they, they, her hair is just sticking straight up in this press conference. And I understand that's how gravity works. And maybe you just think it's funny that your hair sticking straight up, but like maybe get a rubber band. Tie that hair up in a bun because the hair flying around has got to be annoying as shit. If I get as much as a little chinny chin chin hair, I'm bugged. 
If, if my hair even brushes across my nose in a little panty flutter, ah, I want to punch someone in the face. You're on national television. You're already floating in space. You're already stuck in space. Maybe just throw that hair back on a button, get a little clock clip, clip it up. I really hope that they figure it out and that you are able to get home. But I'm scared for you. And are you not bored as shit? Like, do you have television? Do you have music? What do you do when you are bored? Because obviously you're working, you're in space, you're trying to get your space shuttle fixed, but there's only so much you can do, I'm assuming. What do you do if you're stuck on space and with no date home? Do you panic? Are you watching Housewives? Like, what do you got on there to keep yourself entertained? How do you sleep? Are you floating? Do you tie yourself down? How do you know it's the morning and when it's the night? Is it all darkness? Do you see a lot more stars up in space? I've got so many questions for these people. I need them to come down and answer them here on Tyrus <laughs> because this would obviously be their first stop um, on a press tour. Okay, the next thing I want to rant about is Miss Ballerina Farm. Um, so Ballerina Farm, I learned very briefly from, I think, JC, maybe. I just hear about her all the time. I hear about her TikToks. I've never once in my entire life seen a video of her, seen her TikTok, seen her Instagram page, nothing. I know nothing about this girl. So everything I'm saying is just based off of the things that I've been hearing and the conversation around this huge article from the Times that came out. So if you don't know, there's this Instagram TikToker. I think she has like 9 million followers on TikTok. Her name is Ballerina Farm. Her real name is Hannah Neilman. And she is like the the one all be all trad wife. Like she's the poster girl for trad wife. They live in Utah. They have this huge farm. They're Mormon. Her husband is the heir to the JetBlue fortune. Her His father created JetBlue, I believe. So like he's literally a billionaire, but they live a very traditional life, very Yellowstone-esque on a farm, very traditional, very hum humble, like home. Um, and, you know, people are just getting their panties in a tizzy because this girl came and did an article about them on the Times and it seemed like a hit piece. It seemed like she was like maybe being like abused, not physically or anything, but that's what I hate. It's like all the conversation that I've been seeing about this whole this whole situation is the fact that like she's being abused and that like she's in an unhappy home and whatever, blah, blah, blah. The one thing I feel like I want to say about it is, well, I guess I'm not, maybe not the one thing, like maybe I have a lot to say. I don't know. Like, I just think like this girl used to be a ballerina. And she went to Juilliard. She gave up being a ballerina to, you know, live this life of being a traditional wife. And they live on this farm. She has eight kids. Blah, 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 blah. If this girl went to Juilliard to be a ballerina, she has some brains. Like, she's not a dumb individual. And while I'm not saying that smart women can't be put in oppressive situations... I just think that until that person says that, like, it is not our place to be commentating on whether this girl is being abused or not if she's not telling you that. If she's telling you, like, I love my life, I chose this life, I want to be traditional, like, I love my husband, I love my kids, then that is what we should believe and that we should let them be just because she's not out here, you know, it, it, it's just hard, I think, for a lot of people to imagine that someone would be a billionaire and marry a billionaire and be a ballerina and then give that life up to live a more traditional life on a farm and with not a lot of extravagant things and extravagant car or whatever. Trust me, could never be me. If I married a billionaire, I'm driving a Bentley. I've got an Hermes Birkin. I've got all the things. I've got a remote luggage. I'm on a private jet. I'm going, oh, especially if they own JetBlue. Are you kidding me? I'm going to Greece every two days. But I think that you know, this is the life that she chose. And a lot of that definitely is probably tied up with the Mormon religion. And while I don't agree with the Mormon religion and I don't agree with especially their views on women and mothers and the mother's place in a home and, you know, blah, 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 blah. I don't need to understand it for, for me to 
accept that this woman chose that and that she wants that. If that's the life that you want to live and that's the life that you choose, then great. That is the beautiful thing about living in America is you're allowed to do that and you're allowed to do that and be a traditional wife and, you know, have a million children and live on a farm and whatever. And I'm allowed to be a flaming homosexual living in West Hollywood, going and getting drunk at a bar every two days and getting going to a drag show. Like that is what America is. And that is what freedom is. Like you can truly do whatever you want. And that if even if to the outside eye, you would say like, sure, maybe her husband is an oppressor or maybe her husband like is more on the controlling side or blah, 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 blah. That is the Mormon religion and that is the life that she signed up for and she wants. So like, what wh wh what can you say? What can you falter for? Like, I don't, I, like my, my parents, I feel like play a very particular gender role in their relationship. And there's, de my dad is definitely like the patriarch of our household. And like, my mom is definitely the homemaker and that's the dynamic that they want. I personally wouldn't want that, but who am I to judge someone who chooses that path of life? I don't want Ballerina Farm to talk about me being a gay ass bitch out here click, click, clacking about in West Hollywood at a drag show. And so who am I to be commenting on her life choices and who she chooses to spend her time with and what, you know, traditional, non-traditional life she chooses to live? That's up to her. And I think the whole speculation about whether or not she's being abused is so inappropriate because there's been no evidence of it. She hasn't said anything. There's no proof. Like, you just think because of these, you know, more archaic gender roles that her and her husband play within this family of this traditional life on a farm, you think that that's oppressive and you think that that is wrong. But she might not view it that way. She might like it. And so, I don't know. I... Like I said, I'm viewing this just solely based off of everything that I've heard. I've heard a few podcasters talk about it. I've heard a million TikToks about it. I don't know her. I don't know her account personally. I have never even seen a TikTok of her. I didn't read the full article. So I guess I'm a terrible journalist. And I shouldn't even be commenting on it. But a lot of you guys were asking me to comment on it because of the whole like ex-Mormon thing. But I don't know. I just think like she also has literally 9 million followers and they invited this person in to do this article. If she was being abused and she didn't like her life, like she wouldn't be documenting it for everyone to see and to make it seem aspirational. She wouldn't invited this person in to do an article about their life. And because I'm sure she's proud of it. I'm sure she's so proud of this life that she lives in this super crazy world. She has decided to live a very traditional life which is archaic and also so new age at the same time because like that is almost harder to do than not like it's hard to be super clean and traditional and the way that she does that and still like lets the whole world in on that process and what it looks like and like she shows that yeah sure i'm married to a billionaire but that doesn't mean that i want to be real housewives of beverly hills or something like i want to live this more simpler life and i think if she wants to have a lot of kids, she wants to have a lot of kids and whatever. Like, who am I to judge someone's choices if I don't want them to judge mine? I don't want her to talk about me and I'm not going to talk about you. You accept me. I accept you. Okay. And obviously, if the, it became a situation in which it did seem abusive or it didn't seem like her choice or any of those things, that's a different conversation. But from everything that I've read or seen, like that's not the takeaway from the article and that's not the takeaway from her page or her energy that she's giving off. And so I think we need to leave this girl alone. Let her live her little child wife life, collect some eggs, have a million children, live on a farm. As you guys know, I watched Yellowstone and I, that might be me in a few years. I don't know. I might be a trad husband. Anyways, kind of on the Mormon rant, there is a new show coming out called The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives on Hulu. And this is another topic that a lot of you guys were asking me to talk about, but I don't really know too much about because I was so not involved in that whole TikTok drama. The show is based off of like, I think Taylor Frankie Paul or something is her name. I don't know. And it was like the swinger Utah moms on TikTok. And it's kind of built off of that. What I will say is I think everyone has their right to talk about their experience within the church, whether that makes the church happy or not. But what I don't like is 
like mocking the church in a way. I think, like I said, everyone's allowed to have their own opinions and their own beliefs and their own religions. That's what's so beautiful about living in America and everyone's allowed to do their own thing. But I, I don't like the mocking of one thing or another. So I, this, this show will just be interesting. I, I would love to see it unfold. I'm definitely going to watch it. I'm going to tune in because I just hope that they're not being super disrespectful. And I think there's a way to talk about things like girls camp. I love the girls camp podcast with Haley. Like I love how she does her podcast and some people might say that's disrespectful. I don't think that's disrespectful. She's talking about her experience, other people's experiences and legitimate like problems within the church that need to be fixed. She's not coming on and making fun of it. She's not trying to, you know, do ABCDFG. If anything, she's trying to highlight things that they could change and become better if they want to become a better institution. Anyways, I was actually asked to film a scene for this show. I didn't know that it was this show when I was asked and I didn't end up doing it. But um, one of the girls on there had heard me on a podcast talking about like my experience growing up gay and Mormon or whatever. And I guess on the show, they wanted someone to talk about like a, a ex, they wanted an ex-Mormon to talk about their relationship with their church now and their coming out experience and whatever and come at it as kind of like a friend of situation. And I I knew I knew one of the girls that's on it. And so like she was DMing me or the girl, one of the girls on it was DMing me. I've never met her, but she was asking me if I wanted to film it. I didn't know what the show was. I knew it was a Hulu show. And I didn't end up doing it, obviously. But um, yeah, just kind of nice that, you know, everything in the Mormon world kind of circles back to me one way or another. The last thing that you guys wanted me to rant about was the Gypsy Rose crime photos being released. And I didn't even want to go look at them because like, ew, that's so weird. Why would I want to look at literally someone's murdered body? Um, But I did because you guys wanted me to talk about it. And I saw so many TikToks about it and so many tweets being like, oh my gosh, like we've been letting Gypsy off the hook too easy. Like she's evil, blah, blah, blah. She got off way too easy, blah, blah, blah. Um, we all know she murdered her mother or she had her boyfriend do it. We all know she was stabbed in her home. Did you think the crime photos was going to be neat? Did you think it was going to be clean? Did you think it was going to be pretty? Like, no. And I don't even think Gypsy was there. So I don't even think she, I don't know how much involved she was, but like she paid her time. The person who did the murder is still in prison, gladly. But did you think the photos were going to be pleasant to look at? You act disturbed looking at the photographs. And to that, I say, well, no shit, Sherlock. Thank you. Thank you for being disturbed at looking at the photos of Gypsy's mother being murdered. Duh. It's not going to be a pretty sight. I never glamorized Gypsy to begin with. So, yes, you're correct in saying, like, why are we glamorizing this person who literally had her mother murdered? However, I don't think seeing the photo should have you change the way that you were feeling about her because, like, you knew she murdered her mom one way or the other. You didn't know, like, you didn't see the photos. You didn't see her do it. But, like, for you to need to see the photos to then change how you feel about her, to me, says more about you than it does about the situation. Right? I don't know. Anyways, wow, this episode has been chaotic, but we are going to end at the salon. I forgot last Wednesday to do the salon. So let's do it. Let's give some French tips. We've got one client at the salon today. It says, hi, I'm nearing college graduation and I have multiple job offers and I can't decide what to do. I'm so torn between moving out of state to Austin, Texas, away from my family and working in a prestigious but very difficult job or staying in Utah 30 minutes away from my hometown with less diversity and working in a similar job, but less cutthroat. Any advice? 100%, I think... Take the job. Go to Austin, Texas. Your hometown will always be there. Home will always be there. You'll always be able to get a job in Utah. Like, let's be honest. Move somewhere fun. Especially, it's going to be a way better job, way more prestigious, a lot more difficult. But guess what? We like a challenge, especially when you're moving to a new place. It's good to have a job that maybe takes up more of your time because then it doesn't feel like as lonely. But 100%, I'm saying take the job. Go to Texas. Also, I will say Austin, Texas. Woo! The men in Austin, Texas are sexy. The men in Austin, Texas are built different. I don't know if they're eating. I don't know if they're, what they're grown on. I don't know what type of corn they're being fed there. But 
they are just American men in the best way. Austin is kind of like a mini Los Angeles. And there's this like little river that goes throughout the middle of downtown that you can go like swim at. They have cute bars. They have a very good queer scene. So I'm voting yes. I personally would rather live in Austin, Texas than in um, Utah. That's just me, though. I will say, though, it does get bloody balls deep hot in the summer, but so does Utah. So I don't know. I think do it. Anyways, the episode is getting a little too long and I don't want to take up your whole Wednesday morning, tyrants. Um, I'm going to be in Idaho, back at my trailer park in Idaho this weekend. Not in my trailer park, if you understand the reference. I love you if you don't. Uh, maybe you should culture yourself and watch House Bunny. But I'm going to be in Idaho this weekend for one of my best friend's weddings. I'm so, so, so excited. I'm so excited because I didn't go to Flagstaff, so I'm excited to still get that mountain energy, you know, Yellowstone-esque vibes. Nature. Fresh hair. I can't wait. It's going to be so fun to be with all my friends, be at a wedding. Love is love. It's not a gay wedding, but love is love. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Thanks for listening. Make sure to give a rating and review. Do all of the things. You know where to find me on Instagram. And I will see you guys next Wednesday. Bye.